Hi all, welcome back. Now I've got the car painted, it's time to start putting it back together. First of all though, I need to get all the bits out of storage. Everything's been packed in boxes for years and moved around from place to place. At the moment, they're crammed at the back of the shed behind our oil tank. Time to get it all out and sorted. I've basically kept almost everything I took off the car, even some stuff I'm not going to be reusing. You just never know what you're going to end up needing for a template or something. I've bagged a few bits over the years as well when they've come up cheap. But I swear some of this stuff has multiplied. I'm not sure how I ended up with three rear screens. Or five side windows. So, if you want to know what a car looks like without the car, here you go. I dragged a few boxes inside to start sorting them out. I'd honestly forgotten a lot of what I had. At some point I got a couple of extra trim panels. Including one brand new one. Definitely don't remember buying that. I had a lot of random engine parts as well. I remember buying a job lot of parts a few years ago. Most of it's definitely TR7, but there's a few V8 bits in there as well. And there's some random non-engine parts in here. I didn't pack this very well apparently. A whole bunch of piston rings, no idea what engine they're from though, or why I even kept them. That's not a TL7 part. That is though. That's a main beam dash light. More random parts in this box. These are the bits I need now.
These are the straps of the fuel tank. They are a bit crusty, but still good enough. I need to get these studs off though. I got lucky taking these out. I was able to get the studs off the car without wrecking the straps. All I lost was one stud. Even after soaking in oil, they still needed a lot of persuasion. But I got them all in the end, they just needed a quick clean up. The straps were next to get cleaned. And they came up alright. Not perfect, but plenty good enough. So they just got some paint. Filler neck just needed the rust cleaning up. As it had a lot of areas I couldn't get to with any tools, I used electrolysis. It did a decent job, then it just needed a bit of manual finishing. The tank itself was easier, although much more expensive. I bought a new one. The old one was rusty and it had long since been scrapped. It was already primed and just needed some paint. I took the time to clean up the underside of the car before I started fitting anything.
If you were ever wondering how I did all the work on the underside, this is it. It wasn't comfortable or dignified, but it got the job done. I painted the gearbox tunnel while I was at it. This was the last bit of the car I hadn't painted. It was all rust free and in good shape, but I figured a bit of chassis paint wouldn't hurt. Now this doesn't seem like much, but this is actually a real milestone. This is the first part I'll be refitting to the car. If you're wondering why the weird angle here, I'm just trying to keep out the way of the camera. You're welcome. The old fuel sender was giving bad readings, so I bought a new one. It's a straightforward, if slightly fiddly fit. The strap's got new rubber pads. They don't technically need gluing, but I figured it would make life easier when I fitted the tank. I've kept the old fuel line as a template. It made life a lot easier when working out how it was supposed to go. But it was knackered and rusty, so I'm replacing it all with new copper pipe. I was dead paranoid about doing one of these bends the wrong way. You only really get one chance at this, and bending the wrong way means you have to start everything again. Somehow I managed the whole thing without any mistakes.
Annoyingly, you can't get the clips for the back anymore, so I had to drill a couple of holes and fit a different kind. But the rest of the clips were just replaced. Because of how the line is rooted, it needs to join here. I just used a standard compression fitting, that was all that was used before anyway. Then a grommet was fitted here. The hoses were fitted to the tank next. Looking at this footage I can see the paint's a bit thin in places. I honestly couldn't see that when I was doing this. The filler neck hose looked okay but it was actually starting to crack. It's 45 years old now so I just replaced it. I did manage to use the original clips though. Now it's time to fit the tank. This was fiddly to do and I could have used a third hand, but I managed. I use the chassis leg to hold one end up while I put the straps in place. I was honestly just happy I didn't drop the whole thing on my face.
I honestly wish I hadn't bothered with the glue. Even after two days it somehow wasn't dry and just made everything slippery. But eventually it was all in place. Looks like I misjudged the position of the fuel pipe. No big deal. The vent hose just hangs there. I'll trim that and clip it in place later. And yes, this is how I was laying when I did all that. Nobody said this was glamorous. So, I've got the fuel line connected, and that's the underside done. Now to fit the filler neck. I'd had to make the well the filler fits into from scratch after the old one rusted away, so I was worried something wouldn't fit right. But in the end, it was fine. And now the last piece. And that's the end of the video. So, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya!